How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. These are the KBRQ USB cable testers. The top one tests from USB-A to USB-C. The bottom one tests USB-C cables. These devices are actually produced by a small company and the owner Paul actually emailed me about this. If you guys are interested in these products, check out his website and I'll leave it down in the video description below. Sometimes you might have a faulty USB cable and you want to drill right into it and see exactly what is wrong. This device will show you which wire is broken unless of course if there's some black box stuff going on within the cable itself. For USB-C cables, there are the ones that only provide power and then there are the ones that provide data and power. The data and power ones are a bit thicker because there's more wires in it. But today I'm just gonna go over what this device does and what it does not do. Here's a USB-C to USB-C cable tester indicated by C2C Caber QU. The flip side of it has a diagram. You're supposed to put a button cell battery and connect a USB-C cable to itself. You're not supposed to connect this to anything else. It only tests the cable only. Put the battery in. It comes with a screw to lock the battery in place. There's actually no danger of the battery coming out. It's held down pretty tightly. This is actually a child safety prevention measure so children won't eat the battery. It's very dangerous to eat batteries and it can lead to death. You can buy this with or without a case. The back says c2ckbrqu.com and the board fits nicely. Then we can put these screws in place. I have a data USB-C to USB-C cable that has all the wires in it. It's a very high speed and short USB-C cable. When I connect it to one side, it's basically connecting every single one of these wires to the battery positive terminal. Now all of this here has a positive voltage. So when I, let's say, tap the shield, it's going to connect the circuit with an LED into ground back to the battery. So this lights up. When I push the connector in, everything lights up. Now when I say everything, not everything lit up. That's because some of those cables are not actually in there. If I take this cable out and flip it over and then plug it back in, those three connections are now connected on this side. I have a USB-C charge cable. It only delivers power, but if we plug this in, TX1 plus and TX1 minus are actually differential pairs. If you have them, you should have them both. None of those are lit up, meaning that there are no high speed data lines in this USB cable. Typically, I know it's a data cable because it feels a bit beefier. If you just take a look at the diameter is 4.8 millimeter. A power only cable is only 3.3 millimeter. It's subtle, but you can definitely feel that it's thicker. Now let's try out the USB-C to USB-A cable. We plug in the USB-C side. DFP means the down facing port. I'm going to connect the other side to see what's going on with this cable. I purposely use a battery that's a little drained so you can still see the LED but it's a bit weaker. The shield is connected, ground is connected, D plus D minus and VCC. These are the usual USB-A connections. Here's a schematic diagram of this board. You want to concentrate on these two guys here. This is basically an amplifier. You can put very very little current into it and then it'll still light the LED. On these guys is a straight wire so it can provide enough current to light the LED. But these guys, it's in line with a high resistor value so they can't flow that much current. Therefore, you have to flow a little bit of current into the transistor so that it can light up the LED here. This little light here means there's a 56K resistor connected to CC1, which if you're connecting this to something, it tells the device that yes, you can draw power from this connector. So now let's try a data cable. Connect the USB-C side, connect the USB-A side. Well, look at that, everything is on. Here is a CC2, but if we flip it over, it will say CC1, all the lights are lit up, including the data lines. If you do a little bit of electronics tinkering, you might have tried to stick a probe down a USB-A connector. But when you get to USB-C, this is nearly impossible to do. That's why you need some kind of breakout board like the KBRQU. This will allow you to safely plug it into something and there'll be a lot of spots to do the probing. Even if you have a microscope and a very sharp probe, you'll probably mess up the USB-C connector. For most consumers, you probably don't need one of these because if it ever breaks, you probably swap in another cable. If you know that you wanna transfer data, you probably have to look for a really thick cable because it has the data line. If it's just power, you can probably just grab something. And when you swap in the new one and it works, well, it means the old one is faulty. You should throw it away. These USB-C cables are really cheap anyway. You probably don't even have to buy a new one because there's a whole bunch of them laying around the house. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.